update time. Welcome everybody. Update time on the ninja mount and the Michael mount. I have moved myself to the east side because the south and west side are piping hot. So not good for these guys, not at this time. But for any of you that don't have time to watch the video and have a look at each one individually, they're doing great. This is doing fabulously, this concept. So Ninja Mounts, Michael Mounts, the orchids that are on them are doing great. The end. Thank you for watching. Bye. And for everybody else. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, in general, they're doing great. So I just wanted to actually go through them because we have some really positive developments for anybody that might be interested to try something similar, maybe not as you know primitive looking, but this is an evolution and uh, an experiment with prototypes. Who knows where we will go from here? So these are my uh, film keikis that we took off the mother plant in a video. And look at those roots, how they've done. I'm getting a bad reflection on my camera, but can you see how they've extended and grown? You can see that some down here did not continue to make it, but look at all the other ones. And they're going in, they're weaving themselves into the material. And if we turn back, look at that. Breakthrough, we have breakthrough. And what I'm going to do, not on this video, but I will put another padding of white on the back, make it a little bit bulging out, which will be awesome for the winter because I don't have to touch the front of the keikis at all. The film keikis, and my Ninja Orchids root grade scale, which are one, the size is one in this case. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. I wish I had planted them lower. <laughs> it is some kind of a weird trait I have when it comes to mounting orchids. I kind of mount them high. I have to keep remembering that. All right, here is a Brassavola. That was just a stick with some new growth. So this is the flagellaris and the new growth that we're developing out of nowhere are extending, doing really well. I don't understand where this orchid got the energy from to actually produce these new growths. I was about to think we're done, we're done here. But no, we've got one, two, three new growths extending beautifully. And the roots are super slow growing, but you can see that the two that have developed that were nubbins a while ago are now touching the fiber. And I may need to dislodge this tag in order to make sure that it doesn't stop growing. But these roots are very slow, but they're hydrating really well when I do actually spray it. I'm not fertilizing this one at the moment. I don't want to risk burning the roots, but they are alive, they hydrate. And this orchid is on the rebound. Has nothing to do with the mount. I'm not gonna take credit for that because those new growths were starting when I mounted it. So the only thing I can say is this is a zombie orchid. I'm happy about it though. Right, gotta be careful. Because where they hang, I know how the roots are in the back. So I'm not going to risk messing the roots up. Here's the unicum, the piece where the cane was broken, the cane that actually bloomed. And I mounted it on this and we have breakthrough. So N-O-R-G-S, size one, not an issue. I wasn't expecting them to be an issue, but I was expecting maybe to have to be much more on top of the maintenance um, spraying wise. But you can see that we have some new roots growing. That has nothing to do with the mount, but the fact that they are also penetrating through nicely and then weaving themselves into and going into the fabric 
not all are just coming through. They're sort of like growing in and amongst. And that was the whole point of this exercise. Trying to avoid the costly version of EpiWeb. All right, so let's go with another ninja mount and we'll get to the Michael mounts shortly. How about that? How about that? Look at that. Hey, this is my Dendrobium polyanthem with all the new growth of the season doing really well. It was kind of a tough one to actually take off the mount, so it got a little bit mangled and just got chopped off. So you can see the old material that was still on the wooden support it came with. But the new root growth is fantastic. And it is going where it wants to go. It can go down and through the plant, no big deal. But the back is what is impressive. And I'm watching this one. I have this one as like a marker. How much do you grow per day? And it was coming up the plastic here. And now it's decided to vie off into the material. But I think when you look at it like this, yeah, this is successful. This is good. And here I'm also going to put another back layer of white and just fix, secure the white bit on the back on four corners. So they still get air, but they will have humidity. Roll on winter, I've got control. Superb, very happy. This thing is getting heavy. All right. My anospum. Slightly bigger roots, maybe a two or a three on the NORGS. This is a Michael mount. This is how it all began because Michael McCarthy had the genius idea of using Scotch Bright instead of EpiWeb. And I went to town. And here we are. This is the result. The anosmum, the roots are a bit bigger. Obviously, Scotch Bright is much more dense in its structure. So it was interesting to see how roots would react. But they've reacted nicely. Look at this one boring its way through. I hope you can see that. Straight line, there's a sort of a faint line you can see where the root is boring its way through, but through the material, not like, like into the material, not through out the back, which some have done. Isn't that great? Now for this coming winter, I am not going to add a padding on the back because obviously they want it drier and I can still water and mist on the back there and control it that way. I don't have to touch the base. But come the summer or come, let's say, when this orchid gets bigger and the needs increase, then I will probably be able to expand and put the white, less dense material on the back, providing more humidity for all the roots that are hopefully going to come. So Anosmum, I would say, the roots are a go in this material. I think this is marvelous. I'm enjoying these every day when I look at them, when I water them, and to see the roots boring into the material there and not stalling off, that's amazing. Here's the root from a long time ago. A long time ago, <laughs> yeah. Um, that kind of stopped growing and it hasn't continued to grow either. But that for me is the angle of how the root starts to get into the material, which would stop it from growing. Everything that comes in a little bit more on the horizontal side, no issues whatsoever. So I'm not changing this. I'm only going to adapt it once the orchid gets bigger to provide more humidity in the back with the white hob material. Awesome. I love it. Next up, let's get you hung up. Next up is the unicum, the second unicum that I have. And the first one I put on this more dense kitchen scotch bright kind of material. And look at that root coming out there. A sight to behold. Now, Unicum, this one is still on its old mount because I wasn't going to destroy the roots as I was trying to get it the mount off. 
there were new roots already growing in there and I was uncertain about how it would react to this material. So I was, you know, I made kind of a hybrid here, but yeah, for future reference, I'm not going to start ripping it off now. I'm just leaving that cork to do what it wants when it wants to. But we have roots going in, going through. Happy, happy, happy. Look at that. Eh, I should have maybe there. That's not too shabby. So the same principle as these orchids grow on these Michael mounts, I can always expand the back with more material and make them happier as they grow bigger in size and need more humidity. Fantastic. Unicum de is beautiful. And then my little Phalaenopsis wilsonii. Root grade scale eight, I would say. Because it is fleshier, they are larger, but you can see that the orchid is doing fine. It has already matured its second leaf of the season. So there's no stress there. This is a deciduous orchid. Thankfully, I've never lost leaves because I damaged the two leaves from last year. And then it was still with the first two leaves I even got it from, which are these underneath. So I was a bit panicked that I would lose the orchid because if it goes deciduous all the time, I have nothing to photosynthesize with. But I have two gorgeous leaves of the season now, doing really well. And this was one of the first mounts as well to, to test this material. And you can see that the roots are, this one here obviously being thicker roots is struggling and it stopped growing. This one here is coming in at a different angle. Hope you can see that. And I have hopes it's not going to stop growing because I'm not taking it off the mount now to intervene. I want to see what it does. They hydrate beautifully and you can see that late in the afternoon there are still green roots here. I watered them last time about two hours ago and they're still hydrated. So root grade scale eight on a Michael mount with Scotch Bright or similar. We're good. They won't penetrate, I don't think, but we shall see. This is interesting. I like the angle it's going at. And these leaves might drop the outer two. But that is the trait of the orchid. Phalaenopsis wilsonii is known to be deciduous. So, and I have something little growing in there. There's something really tiny growing right there. So I don't know if that's another spike already. It did bloom this year, but I don't know. Leaving it to do its thing and get used to this. But I'm liking it. I'm hopeful. Very hopeful. And what makes me so hopeful is the fact is how much water these actually retain when it's really hot and windy in my climate. They retain a lot of water, which is great. Let's see, let's see, let's see. One more example. I'm so happy. I know it doesn't look like much, but here's Dendrobium exile. Look at it. It still looks scruffy. It still looks like it hasn't made any headway but we have some roots. We have new roots, which is super important for me. I don't want to lose this, lose this one. It was really weak at the beginning of the season, went from a mount into a pot back on the mount. <laughs> so you can see that here I have no roots coming through at all. From the root grade scale, it is a definite one because they are super fine. So I'm not concerned about the material stopping it. And you can see one is diving in. And there's another one in the back here, diving in as well. But look at how great it's doing. I've got a little cakey coming. I've got the, the new growth that was in question at the beginning of the season was this one. I thought it was growing upright. I got my directions wrong. It went onto a Michael mount and look the extension of the growth that it already had that was developing since last year. That funky little growth that we had right at the beginning, I thought wouldn't amount to much is extending 
I have another growth coming here, which is new, and another one, if I can show you, right back here, past that old sphagnum moss. Right there. Let me see. That's better. There we go. There's all the growth. This one is just starting. This little one in the back here is a very nice surprise as well. This one I thought had stunted and stopped. It is extending. This growth is doing beautifully and it's coming onto its own. Oh, this would be awesome if one day it becomes all scruffy and alien looking. I love it. I love it. So the mount for the Exili is a go. Not many roots to speak for. But what is growing there right now is going to just come out with lots of roots and we are winning here. Now I'm going to show you my pièce de résistance, my Brassavola flageralis. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, and her fragrance. Oh my goodness, her fragrance. Oh, love it. But look at this. This is now back with the ninja mount terminology. Look at these roots. And here I had the old mount. I didn't peel off the orchid. And I had put the white material on the back, very loose, only sewn around the outer edges and everything else was left alone. And look what it's doing. Look at those roots coming through. And look at the amount of humidity still in this part of the mount. It's awesome. And this is the upper part. So it doesn't actually just pool at the bottom. It's doing great, really, really great. This root here I maneuvered in because I don't want too much dangling outside. It's very precarious. And it is loving it hasn't stopped growing. So I'm waiting for this root here to get long enough so I can, you know, maneuver it in as well. But all the other ones here, we've got fantastic root growth. No matter where it touches, there is no dieback. So for me, the hob material is a go for any root size. And then the Scouring pad, scotch bright for the lack of a better term, is a go for very fine rooted orchids or if you're in a very humid climate, thicker rooted orchids as well. But look at that. I've got two new growths coming as well. This is bizarre. Happy bazaar. Where are you? How can I show this in focus? There we go. Look at those two new growths right there. Oops, slowly, one and two. And we are in late September. How amazing is that, huh? I am super pleased. I am so happy. Thank you so much for the inspiration, Michael. I am uh, very, very impressed with how all this is turning out. It's been a great, great experiment. And I will do more of this. I can adapt it. I can build on it. So how are we doing with the algae? My big question that I wouldn't be able to answer until some time had passed. And you can see the pockets of, let me just go down a little bit. You can see the pockets of brown accumulating. Now that is, the first time I saw that was when I sprayed with uh, seaweed. And then I thought, okay, that's normal. It's a uh, brown liquid so it would be brown. And it's happening to all the ones that have where I let water sit because the good thing, another good thing about this, careful where I touch, another good thing about this is every little square, as the water goes down, it pools in each of these little sections, which retains the humidity and water also for much longer. And that is where you see all the little, like, I would say that's already the start of algae, but I'm not too concerned. It's not, it's not worrying me because 
with the strong jet of my spray, I can actually go right into it and be as aggressive as I want if I want to blast it out. But I'm not going to do that at this point. I mean, I spray a lot with just plain RO water uh, in the afternoon. I consider that the flush. So this is like a, you know, mixture of what was left of the seaweed and what's now accumulating because of the algae. But here, you can see how the darkness is starting. Now, yes, it's wet, but this little margin here is also darker when it, the pad is dry. So there is an accumulation of salts on the bottom. I still don't have roots long enough to go into that area to see if they're going to burn. We're not at that stage yet. But also with a lot of RO water, when I do my afternoon sprays, I take the strong jet and really work on the lower part of the pad just to make sure that I don't accumulate the salts too much. There will always be some residue and you can see that happening here. More, obviously, on the denser material of a scouring pad than you would actually on the ninja mounts. Them being white, they should be totally brown by now. You can also say, well, these haven't been as mounted as long as those. There was only a two week difference in timing from when I mounted Ninja to the, to the Michael mounts. It was only two, two weeks. So it's not that. The density of the material obviously retains much, much more salt. So if I missed anything with regards to what we've just seen and what I wanted to update, I will put it in the description below. But I think, I think this is a go. This is, this, yeah, this inspires me. This is good stuff. Loving it. Well, thank you. Let me see if I can hold this still. I can sign off with a beautiful view of the bloom and not break a root. There we go. So, thank you so much for indulging me with your presence and having a look at how the Ninja and the Michael mounts are doing. I really appreciate having you here. Have a wonderful day, stay safe, take care, bye.